And we're back on I'm Every Woman TV. And we just uh, had a segment with Paula Abdul for my Jewish Soul event. And um, I'm going to introduce my next guest to you. So if you're crazy about food, you've come to the right place. Because my next guest, Noreen Gillitz, who is a, a food culinary specialist, writer, cookbook author, um, and uh, amazing, amazing cook, is going to teach you how to make affordable, healthy, gourmet meals today. We're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about Noreen's connection to Paula Abdul. She is actually her first cousin. So welcome, Noreen. Thank you so much for having me on, Jeanette. You're so welcome, Noreen. Thank I'm you. so happy to have you here and, and making you a part of this. Tell me how exactly you are. I know you're her first cousin. Tell me how you are related to Paula Abdul. Well, I didn't even know I was related to Paula Abdul. My family ended up telling me. I, th I thought Paula was, I don't know, like everybody else, African-American. Never had an idea she was Jewish. Um, I grew up in Winnipeg. My father, my late father, and Paula's grandfather were first cousins. My grandfather and Paula's great-grandfather were brothers. My, my Zeta. Uh, Rita Rikus, yeah, yeah. I'm a Rikus, uh, and her gran great grandfather, um, Avraham, they were brothers. And actually, Paula's grandfather is buried on the same row in the Winnipeg, in Sherazetic Cemetery in Winnipeg, uh, in Winnipeg, that my grandparents are buried in. My parents, they're all on, all the Rikuses are still all connected way back from when. Now, um, to your knowledge, because I mean, you, you, you freely admit that you didn't know that you had a connection here. Do you know if Paula uh, ever had trips back to Winnipeg growing up? She said that she, that, the, that she had a connection. I, I don't know much about her history. We ended up meeting after the event. Uh, was, we came to see her when Chabad was doing the presentation with her. She was amazing. She speaks from her heart. Yeah, she's she's a, she really has a wonderful way of communicating with people. And she, she's totally unaffected, as, as talented and capable and inspiring as she is. Um, but I, I didn't know any of this. My sister and my cousins had arranged it. They said, let's go. This would be really a good thing to do. My sister uh, knew more about it because my sister had lived in Winnipeg. My sister Rhonda had lived in Winnipeg um, for many, many years and has only been in Toronto for, I guess it's, um, I guess, 11 years. I've been out of Winnipeg since uh, 1960. It's a long time. And Paula had left. I met her, but I did meet her. Uh, grandparents. I, they came to our house and my brother is actually named for Paula's grandfather. My brother Bruce is named after her grandfather Bill. That's good. Yeah, kind of neat. It is neat to have that kind of a, a story and, and as you said, you know, Paula, she is a very nice, sincere person. Mm -hmm, from the heart. And she does care to make other people uh, feel not only welcome, but like very good in their own skin and, and you know, inspiring. inspiring to go forward with what they want and to be authentic. And that's what really, you know, I felt was a, a very good highlight about her. And and I'm, I'm also impressed with the fact that she continues her Jewishness through her involvement with Chabad and particularly mm -hmm. in, in she's she's an advocate for lighting the Friday night dinner Sabbath candles, which, you know, brings light into the world. So my question to you is, um, you obviously grew up in a pretty traditional family. Obviously, Absolutely. Paula's roots are also pretty similar, traditional. Similar roots. She does have uh, Ashkenazi, like Eastern Europe and Sephardic blood. So she would have something of the similar. And you became a cook when you were in your 20s. Uh -huh. And without I would Without training. Without training. <laughs> I'm not this kitchen. So <laughs> that's what my question was, like how much of the family do you um, get your inspiration for cooking like and you know bringing the family together and like how important was the cooking in, in your life through the traditions and what have you that inspired you to go forward as a culinary professional? Well I was always fascinated by recipes. My mother was an amazing cook, never needed a recipe in front of her. She knew how to figure out everything. Um, my grandmothers both were, were wonderful cooks um, and bakers and food is, I think food is kind of the culinary umbilical cord that connects us all. You can re I can still remember sitting at my, my grandmother's table and I remember eating at the seders and I remember having to know the firkashas in, in, in Yiddish because that's what I learned and I remember my grandmother making things. My mother made the most amazing knishas. She never threw anything out. Um, people didn't have a lot of money so 
I learned how to be a very practical cook. I, I don't cook with a lot of fancy ingredients. I use more vegetables, let's say, that my than my mother would use, uh, more healthy ingredients than my mother might have used. But you know, food comforts us. Food connects us. You can talk. You can go to a party, or you can go into a room, and you can connect with somebody. Just find what they like to eat, and you've got a conversation going for the next 20 minutes minimum. That's true. So now I actually touched upon two other questions that I had, which is, um, you know, your one of your books, Noreen's Healthy Kitchen, which we have as a giveaway today. If you want to hold here. that up, sure. uh, is worth. Thirty-four ninety-five. Yeah, that's a free giveaway for first one in Jeanette at yourmarketingmagnet.com. It's about healthy eating, right? And uh, whether we're Jewish or not, it was you know, there's a lot of similarities between cultures and people in general. What what are some of the things you advise about? Uh, how eating healthier? How do you prepare healthier gourmet meals? Well, people think they have to cut out all the fat, and I don't think you have to because fats actually some of the fats are healthy. Um, you want to have the you know olive oil, canola oil. Not the, here. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, we'll get you cooking yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I love to cook. Well, we, we were talking yeah. about that. Well, you and I had a whole con conversation yes. about how you made sure you had you know your Friday night dinner. It's the tradition every Friday. Every Friday, yes. right? Yeah. And so a lot basically fruit fruits, grains, um, fruits and vegetables, grains, legumes, that's the basis of Noreen's Healthy Kitchen, good for anybody who's diabetic, anybody who has heart issues, anybody on a low glycemic index diet, um, and, but my recipes don't taste diet. I, I don't like contrived food. I like real food with, with tum. It's got to have taste. Yes. Yeah. Now, today's women are very busy, and oh, uh -huh. a lot of us don't have the time or maybe just don't know how to cook. And it does impede our diet choices, and we're not always healthy. Um, do you have a tip, one tip that you could give um, somebody who's a, a woman, who's a busy woman juggling many things, on how to just make one thing healthier in their in their life? Less the fat, but like, like an actual sort of maybe recipe or something that, what is something they could replace to make it healthier and make the, make the kids want it, make the whole family want to eat it? I think if, well, if you, first of all, if you have young children, it's nice if you can get the whole family involved in helping prepare. If kids help prepare food, they'll end up having a, a better chance of eating it. Uh, soups are great because they're, anybody can make soup. If they're really um, fail proof. Um, I have tons of soups in, in my books and they also keep you full and satisfied and it's a great way to sneak some nutrition onto your plate. Now you have another book, yeah. and this one's called The New Food Processor Bible. And this is what, the 30th anniversary? This is the 30th edition? anniversary edition. So this is a real keepsake for another person who's the first to uh, come in and claim this prize at Jeanette at yourmarketingmagnet.com. Uh, my question here is, um, you know, the food processor was very popular, then it took sort of a, a bit of a nosedive, and now it's back. But I think that a lot of women are not quite familiar with, you know, the whole, f how to get the maximum use out of the f of food processor. So my question is, can you give me one thing that every woman should know about using the food, food processor? Okay, your steel blade is pretty well the magical, um, you, the, the, basically the main tool that you're going to use in your food processor. It can chop, it can puree, it can mince, it can um, grind meat, it can make a soup, it can mix up a cake batter. It, it does probably about 95% of the tasks that you need in your, to do in your kitchen. It's very simple. Keep it uncomplicated. So start with the driest ingredients first and then add the liquid ingredients or the wetter ingredients because I'm. people think that I'm always doing things, but I'm really very practical and I try to save on cleanup. If you're busy washing dishes all the time, forget it, you're not going to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So cook to minimize um, the mess, and that's how I write my recipes. They're always written so that it's the most practical way to cook, and, make, and my recipes make a visual image so that it, it helps guide you through. So it sounds like, you know, the food presser is a girl's best friend next to diamonds, uh, well, well, diamonds you know, because diamonds be it really better. helps us <laughs> expediate things, yeah. which we need. Um, you named it the Bible, the Food Processor Bible. How did you arrive at that title? I didn't. Everybody else called it their Bible. <laughs> oh. The original edition came out in a binder format, oh. and I, was, I did my own publishing, and um, 
it, the, the original yellow binder, The uh, Pleasures of Your Food Processor, is now a collectible book. I've seen it for like, one time it was, I think, about $2,000 on eBay. Wow. It's probably, it's probably several hundred dollars. Very hard to get a hold of it. Wow. Yeah. But uh, this edition is very different. It's got nutrition. Actually, if anybody has kidney issues, there's even information on phosphorus. So I try to see where the, what people need. I try to answer I try to f help people uh, find answers to their questions. So, Noreen, you're also a businesswoman. I mean, your company is called Gourmania, mm -hmm. and Gourmania has a lot of different elements to it, including your books, your classes, your culinary uh, uh, courses. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what you have to offer? And, and my question here is kind of twofold in that, did you get a keen business sense from your family? And maybe so, like, maybe you share that with Paula because she's also a pretty good businesswoman. Okay, um, my mother was in business. She was fabulous. I, I could never do what my mother did. I, I'm more creative. Um, so what I do with um, my business, I'm, it's pretty well me, with, and I bring in other people if I need to. Um, I will do recipe development, I write books. Uh, right now I'm not writing anything because I'm, you have to be inspired to f and find a need to, I, I, to, to do it. And I'm not quite sure what the next book will be and publishing was sort of in an up and down situation. But I work with clients, I will develop recipes for them. I will teach, I do large events. I did an event for Chabad in, um, in Montreal in November. I'm, I've been invited to do um, something for Hadassah Witzow here in Toronto in May, possibly something in, in April. Um, um, I'm connected, I write for Canadian Jewish News. Basically my world revolves around food. So if it's got ingredients in it, it's usually something that I'm involved in. We do nutrition for people. I do consulting when people want to write a cookbook. Um, I act as a consultant or a guide or and, and try to help. And can some, someone um, hire you also for courses? What if um, what if they wanted to bring you in to prepare like a, a culinary delight for them? Would you do that? Would you go and be like their personalized chef? I don't do personal chefing. No, um, no I don't, but I, I do know people who do. Mm -hmm. uh, and because people are so busy today. But what I have done is uh, sometimes I've done where um, it's been a gift. Um, a young, my rabbi and, 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 the, and the Rebbitson, there, somebody gifted them with a cook, private cooking class in their home. And they had a fabulous time. And when you work with someone in their own kitchen, they learn to work with the equipment that they have. So I, I will do that on occasion. I'm not doing any regular scheduled classes. So I, I may do something very small or very large. Um, what is your favorite dish to make? Depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> Appetites change. Um, probably I like kugel because I grew up on it. I like kasha. Okay, I, let's, uh, let's define that for our oh, non jews okay. Is a noodle pudding mixed a noodle, with... It could be a, a kugel can be a noodle pudding, a vegetable pudding. Um, it can be... Basically, it's a, it's a mishmash of ingredients that is baked kind of in a casserole, or if they're small, they're baked in individual muffin tins, um, and they're served. There's a, there's a joke. They say, we're having company for Friday night dinner. We have three guests coming. Do you think nine kugels would be enough? Starchy side dishes. That <laughs> would be the best way to that describe it. That are easy it. to prepare. That just taste good. Pure comfort. And I like kasha, which is buckwheat, which does not have wheat in it. Oh. People don't know that. I have. That's good for the yeah, gluten. -free. Very good for people with gluten-free. People are very into gluten. That became a very big health trend today. Yes. One in 133 for people. For celiac disease. For celiac people who are gluten intolerant. Um, even for Passover, there are people who won't eat matzah that gets wet or matzah meal. Right. Or, yeah. And now uh, your cookbooks, like. I, I, I see having done a thorough review of your website. You obviously uh, did. <laughs> uh, they are geared to, you know, Jewish kosher eating, but they're geared to people who Doesn't are not. Doesn't matter. So can you comment a little bit about that? Like how could any, anyone really benefit from uh, what your advice is on cooking? Well, it's interesting because I've looked at some of the reviews on Amazon and they're not always from somebody who is Jewish. Uh -huh. um, Noreen's Healthy Kitchen is for anybody who has diabetes, uh, heart health, weight, weight loss, um, weight watchers, any, any of those areas. Um, food processor, it just, the, I used my recipes as a guideline on how to uh, utilize your processor 
but you can, I, then I will explain, there's a whole intro section explaining how you can adapt the recipes to your own recipes. And you shouldn't be bound by recipes. My recipes are just an example of different things you can do, different categories of recipes that you can do. Cookies, cakes, pie doughs, don't want to do that, do soups, do main dishes, appetizers. Okay, well, I do the whole we're running damage. a little out of time, so I'm oh, just going to remind <laughs> everyone that we have two giveaways today. The new food processor Bible, the 30th anniversary edition, is here for the taking at uh, $29.95. Right. And That's Noreen's, its value. Yeah. Na, and Noreen's Healthy Kitchen is the other cookbook at $24.95. That $34. we have. Sorry, sorry, $34.95. Um, we're having it as giz giveaways today. Uh, your website is gourmania.com. Yeah, triple W, G-O-U-R, the first part of gourmet. G-O-U-R, mania.com. And you can go there and visit to learn more about your services. And I'm on Facebook. I have a group called Noreen's Kitchen on Facebook. And we answer cooking questions. And everybody asks all kinds of crazy questions about food. Okay, great. So uh, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your connection to Paula Abdul and your wonderful family history. Thank you. Thank Jeanette. you for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this broadcast and we'll see you next time on I'm Every Woman TV. Until then, continue to be fabulous.